Previously on Dice Versa. So you all disembark and step out onto solid ground for the first time in six days. As you rustle through the bushes, Soldier C shoves her gun into the bushes. Both shots hit you. What? Uko, let's fire rain upon them. <laughs> I'm going to fire off another round. Your gun jams and the battery pack falls out of it. <laughs> well, that could have gone better. You see these strange simian creatures. They're covered in blue and brown fur. Uko repositions a little and just... <laughs> My name is Jellic Folson. I'm one of the colonists from Madelon's Landing. Can you tell us what uh, what's happened? It all kind of started with that damn meteor. They figured out that it was some kind of high-tech probe or something like that. It wasn't long after... After that, that the starship started appearing, and their leader, she told us that this whole planet is now part of the Aslanti Empire. As the day grows warmer, the fog begins letting up a little bit, but not too much. You can still only see maybe 50 feet ahead of you, maybe. And currently, Jellic is leading you guys through the forest, back to the settlement, Madelon's Landing. And as he's leading you, he's been trying to just like fill the awkward silence as you guys are heading back towards the colony, and he's just trying to make small talk with you guys. So, uh, what kind of ship y'all got anyway? It used to belong to the free captains, but Sodona was able to get it from a warden auction at a reduced cost, so she gifted it to me as long as I did work for her. You don't say? Yes. Well, yes, yeah, Sodona's a nice lady, ain't she? She ain't give me a ship yet. Ow. You all know Sedona? that right? Yeah. All right. Well, that's yeah, good. She's, she's yeah, brought no, me to... Like Sorry, Sorry, what's that, Nevesa? Um, I was saying that she's brought me in on a consulting job every now and then. Oh, are you, uh, you a cop? Uh, no, I, I do freelance. If you do, you gotta tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am, I am not a cop. I'm an investigator. Oh, all right. So? Oh, wait. Hey, we're almost there. Best be quiet now. He sort of hunkers down a little bit, and you can see 50 feet ahead of you guys, the trees give way to a large open area. You can see these large rectangular buildings peeking out from the fog. They look like shipping containers. Angelic points to a group of three of the connected buildings at the northern edge, just a few yards away from where you are now. That there is Breda's workshop. There's a loose panel on the back that we can use to sneak you in. Follow me. Be quick about it. And he scurries forward and pulls aside the panel and urgently ushers you all inside. Let's keep quiet, friends. You two go ahead. Go, go, go. All right. Mishka gets low and tries to wrestle through the bushes with no sound. So you guys pretty effortlessly just run through. The opening is big enough for Uko to just kind of squeeze in. So you all rush in through this panel and you find yourselves in what appears to be a repair workshop. You see a bunch of open tool chests lining the walls and there are spools of wire piled on the ground. And you see a few heavy duty workbenches that are buried under broken equipment in the center of the room. You see that the far wall, it's a garage door that's open to a yard that is full of broken furniture and broken down engines and that sort of stuff. And surrounding the yard is a short metal fence. And beyond that, the rest of the settlement fades into the fog. And as you guys enter, Jellic pulls the panel closed behind you with a loud scrape and he hurries across the room and tries to shut that garage door out to the yard. And as he's rushing across the room, he knocks a toolbox from the edge of a workbench and he sends the tools all clattering to the floor. In the next moment, you see a stocky human woman as she appears in the doorway with a heavy wrench above her head ready to strike. You see a look of recognition cross her face as her eyes fall upon Jellic and she stops short from swinging and she says, Jellic? What the hell are you doing here? What, you already gave up on your escape attempt? You know I don't want to see you. And Jellic like backs up and puts his hands up. He says, whoa, whoa now, brother. I, I know, and I wouldn't be here unless I had to be. Now look, these folk helped me. They saved my life. 
So now I guess you're just inviting people into my home, huh? <laughs> what, I assume that you told them I would give them some upgrades for free or something for saving your dumb ass? <laughs> Sorry, folks. Y'all should have let him die out there. I told the old fool not to go out in the first place. <laughs> now, Breda, goddamn, calm down. <laughs> just listen for a second, please. These folk want to help us out. They don't seem too shy about giving the Islanti what for, neither. Hell, I seen them kill two of them myself. From what they told me, they killed more before that. So look, I know you don't want to see me. I know you're still mad. But if we want to get rid of these damn soldiers, we're going to have to let the past be the past for now. I know you ain't the kind to look a gift horse in the mouth, and well, this horse is dragon-shaped. <laughs> and dog-shaped. <laughs> and, uh, human-shaped. And Abretta just, like, pinches the bridge of her nose and lets out a sigh. <sighs> just shut up, Jellic. <laughs> Go get us something from the kitchen and grab the first aid kit while you're at it. These folk look like they've had a rough morning. Indeed we have, especially our big friend here. I am sorry that we had to intrude. Mm-hmm. And Jellic pushes past her into the adjoining room and she raises an eyebrow and stares daggers at him as he passes. <laughs> and then she steps aside to let the rest of you enter her home. Thank you for your uh, hospitality, even if it was volunteered without your consent. Mm-hmm. No problem. Come on in. <laughs> yes, thank you. She leads you guys to her living room. And as she's leading you there, you can see her in the light now. She has brown wavy hair that's pulled up into a messy bun. And she's wearing orange coveralls that are smeared with dirt and grease. And she has a pair of heavily tinted goggles that are strapped to her forehead by a thick leather band. So she leads you all into her living room and she begins clearing some broken data pads off of the couch and the chairs nearby. And she says, sit down any way you'd like. Uko's going to sit in the middle of the sofa and just, <laughs> just lifts up the ends. <laughs> yeah. It's very slow and careful. Oh. She herself slumps down heavily into a well-worn recliner and crosses her arms and just looks at you all carefully. After a moment, she says, So, aside from saving my idiot ex-husband, <laughs> what are y'all doing on the Condis? We were asked to come here by Sedona. We all have previous experience with her, and she'd mentioned that something peculiar had come here, and your ex mentioned something about that. And Nivesa kind of keeps walking around the room and, like, picking up broken data pads, looking at them, like, running her finger along, like, dirty places and just wiping it off as she talks. <laughs> Judging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making a perimeter. Yeah. But Breda is keeping her eye on you as you're doing this, but doesn't seem to object to it at all. She says, oh, yeah, Sedona told you about that whatever the hell it is. Oh, well, she just told me to make sure these two don't die, so... Uh, oh, yeah, it looks like you're doing a great job of that. Well, they aren't dead. Yeah, we're still alive, so he's doing his job well enough, and we very much appreciate it. Um, but yes, uh, we were also here to deliver some supplies as well. Yeah, that was, uh, that was before all this nonsense went down. Yes, uh, we didn't know about the attack, so when we arrived, our ship was getting shot at by some drones. So, seeing that and... You know, not hearing anything from the colony, we tried to contact you. But not hearing anything, we decided to be cautious and scout out the area first. Oh yeah, the Islanti got a suppression signal over the entire colony. None of our comms are working. Hell, they even blew up our comm tower, so even if they didn't have the suppression, we'd be screwed anyway. Yes, uh, good, good, Mr. Jellic told us about that, yes. Oh yeah, uh, what else did he tell you? Eh, just that. Not much else. He did mention that there's maybe about... 30 of the Islanti soldiers here. We've taken out at least about five or so, so hopefully only about 25 left. Sedona's gone missing with some people or something. You guys haven't heard from them in a while. Well, last we saw her, she got taken with Madelon into the garrison, so I assume that she's still in there with them. All right, so all we need to do really is just check the garrison and problem solved. You get paid and y'all do your work and stuff, right? If only it were that simple. Well, if what you say is true, and uh, if you are here to help... Of course. I think I know where we could begin. And she lowers her voice and leans forward and she says, I've actually been working with some other colonists here in the settlement, 
um, coordinating a few, let's call them counter tactics. And just that Jellic appears in the doorway with an armful of bottled water and packaged snacks. And he's clutching an old battered first aid kit and he places everything down on the coffee table and he says, Oh, come on now, brother. It's a resistance, a rebellion. And you're in charge of it whether you like it or not. You're going to have to learn to call it what it is. Keep it down, you idiot. Our resistance is just a bunch of ideas so far. We didn't exactly have the resources to put much into action. Angelic sits down next to Uko and begins wrapping his wounds in some bandages and he knocks on Uko's big armor. Well, we might have the resources now. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, just maybe, but... Whatever we can do to help. Well, first we gotta make sure that everyone in the camp is safe. And she looks at Jellic. Rendell still hasn't made a peep since this morning. Still? Mm-hmm. Rendell Tace, he's in charge of the supply storeroom. We saw a soldier head in there this morning. Then there was some commotion from inside, and it's been quiet ever since. And I'm afraid Rendell got himself in something stupid. If you could go check on him, I'd appreciate it. We, uh, gonna have to sneak through your town here, or can we just walk about freely? How, uh, how's the security? There's usually only about two patrols out at any given time. The rest of the soldiers are either out scouting in the forest like you've seen, or uh, they're in the garrison for hours at a time. And you know, this fog might be a blessing for once. Yes, it could, it could provide good cover. Do you have any idea of their uh, patrol schedule? Look, there's about a hundred colonists here, okay? So you can blend in just fine as long as the soldiers don't see your weapons. Y'all should be okie dokie. <laughs> Navessa just turns and gives like a very meaningful look at Uko. Are you entirely sure about that? Uh, he holds his big melee weapon in his hands as he's sitting on the sofa getting his wing patched up, just like, uh, yeah. Worst case scenario, if you guys get caught, there's no getting around them taking your weapons or trying to take your weapons, but if you don't want them knowing that you're from off-world, and we probably don't want them knowing you're from off-world, you can tell them that you're from another part of the colony, maybe like the mines or something. Better than them knowing that people are coming from the packed worlds to help out. So, uh, just killing them isn't an option? Ow, careful, Jellic. I mean, if you can, look, we got a lot of work ahead of ourselves. We gotta do everything we can to weaken their stance. Because if we hit that garrison now, it's gonna be bad news. How many units do they have per patrol? How many units? Like, how many people are in the patrol? Yes. Uh, usually at like two or three. Oh, we could kill them, no problem. But can we do it quietly is the question. Yes, we can definitely use the crowd, the, the citizens, as a, as a cover. And if they get close enough, we can hopefully take them out lickety split. Just try not to hurt anybody who's not a son of a bitch, you know what I'm saying? Of course. All right, only the annoying people, no problem. Only the Aslanti. Mm, okay. Well, first things first, let's go meet this, um, I'm sorry, what did you say the name was again? Randall, over at the supply room, yeah, you gotta go check him out. Make sure that, that everything's okay over there. The guard never came back out, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the worst. I really would, would prefer not to bury another one of our colonists. Especially not Randall. Let us investigate first before your, your mind goes to anywhere dark. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'll let the others know that things might be getting set into motion a little bit earlier than planned. Sounds good. Talk to your people. We'll be back soon. Just go out through the way you came and keep heading east and you'll see the storeroom. It's a real big warehouse. You'll you'll recognize it. It does not say uh, warehouse written on it or something like that. No, it's not labeled or anything like that, but... Uh, We'll, we'll find it, we'll find it, it's okay. But I'll work on something for you so you can find your way around. How about that? That would be great. Sounds good. I'll have that ready when you get back. Sounds good. You ready, team? Uko stands and flexes his wings, seeing how well Jellic did with it, and he's like, Ugh. He did a fairly good job. The bleeding is at least staunched for now. Yeah, sure. Let's, uh... Let's get to it. So, you guys... Head back out through the panel, and Jellic scrapes it closed behind you again, and you now find yourself standing in the settlement. Try not to make too much noise, okay, friend? Hugo looks down at himself like, 
do my best. That's all I ask. Uko's gonna try and wait behind for the okay signal from these two before he starts moving anywhere. So he doesn't want, like, these two to be fine, and then he walks up and the guards are like, wait a minute! <laughs> Mishka moves south, just kind of crouches really low, more or less, like, <laughs> walking like a dog. <laughs> but a sneaky dog. As you make your way south, you see this building here, which is much larger than the others and looks like a big warehouse. I think I see the building uh, across the ways here to the southeast. I don't see anyone here. Let's get in there before we do see anybody. I will run across a path and then start heading along the wall towards the north. Look around the corner. You see this path that stretches upwards to the north and sort of disappears behind the trees. And then behind the building that you're hiding behind, the big warehouse, it stretches off to the east. Should we maybe try the walkway leading up to the front of the building? I motion to them to hold on for a second. I'm just make like hand signals, hopefully conveying that Mishka wants to do a quick perimeter around the building to see if there's anyone nearby. So he's going to do a quick lap around the building after doing that. Uko's just looking at uh, Navessa like, did you understand any of that? <laughs> um... I think he's going around something. Um, <laughs> Does he want us to... F should we go around or... I think he wants us to stay here. So you make your way around the north, over to the east, and then back down south on the perimeter of the building, not seeing any doors until you reach the southern edge. And as you turn that corner, you do see a large open door. And next to it, you see another smaller door that says the word office on the glass window. So there's two doors on this side? Yes, there are two doors basically right next to each other. One of them is a big like garage door that they would use to bring supplies in and out. And then another one is just a regular door to an office. Is there any windows to either door? The office door, like the upper half of it, has a window in it. I will sneak up to the door and try to peek inside to see if I can see anything. You very easily can just walk right up to it. And as you look in, you see that the office is empty. There's nobody inside of it, but it does look like some ruckus happened in there. There is a shelf that has been tipped over and all of the supplies that were on that shelf are just splattered across the ground. Okay, I see no signs of anyone. As you pass by the large open door, the big open garage door, you do actually see one of the Zlanti soldiers standing there at attention at another door that leads from the office to the warehouse itself. Oh, so like the... So there's a door on the outside that leads to the rest of the colony and then a door on the inside that leads into the warehouse through the office. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Then I try to wait till he's not looking at the entrance to the warehouse and then just run past. Go ahead and make a sense motive check real quick. Sense motive. That is a 15... So you notice that this soldier's posture is actually pretty lousy. And as he's examining his gun, he seems to like fumble with it awkwardly a little bit. Sounds good. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll slip past when he's fidgeting with his gun and not paying attention. All right. Go ahead and make a stealth check then. Yes, sir. That's a 26. So you slip past the door and he does not notice you. You come back around to the side that you started on and you see Navessa and Uko standing there looking at you expectantly. So... I'll wave them over. Can we move now? I guess that means we head over. You guys regroup outside of the building. Mishka puts a finger up to his snout. Try to keep quiet, but there's at least one soldier inside. I presume he's probably guarding the fellow who owns the warehouse. We could try to sneak in or just, you know, probably ambush him and take him out. I mean, the less soldiers they have to fight with, the easier their whole resistance thing, right? So... Why not just kill them in honorable combat or whatever? I think I have a plan. Follow me. So you guys all skirt back around the building, back to the large open door, and you can see him standing in there, still looking unprofessional and awkward. I'll have Uko hang out by the door. Which door? Uh, the big warehouse door. Okay. And then I will just make some noise outside. Just like throw some rocks around and try to get the guard to come over. So you don't need to roll anything for that. You chuck a rock and it clatters against the gravel pathway that's on the opposite side of the door. 
And Uko, as you're peering in, you see the soldier look over and straighten up and snaps to attention, basically, and looks around. Uko, make a sense motive check here while you're looking at him. Okay. That is a nine. <laughs> so, yeah, he snaps to attention and he's he's just looking around and then nothing happens. So he just goes back to fumbling with his rifle. Was that part of your plan, Mishka? Well, I was hoping to draw him out. Mm. Maybe he needs a little more encouragement. Hey, hey, come here. Maybe that could work. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over at you and he sees you. Yeah, just peek in my head. Come here. He looks surprised for a second. He actually, like, lets go of his rifle a little bit and he says... Who are you? And he actually lifts his helmet off to reveal a thin, dark face and curly black hair. He looks around worriedly and he like waves you in. He says, get in here. Hurry up. Hurry up. Uh, They're going to see you. Hurry up. Get in here. <laughs> Turn back and say, get, get in, get in, get in. I guess we go in. Yeah. Uko's going to walk in and like draw his blade just slowly like, all right, look. He says, whoa, 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 whoa. No, you, no need for that. You're not. He looks down at himself. He says, oh, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, uh, no, my name is Rendell Tace. I'm I'm in charge of the storeroom and uh, oh, it's been a long morning. <laughs> well, I'm glad we didn't carry out my plan. Your what plan? We were going to try to lure you out so my big friend here can ambush you. What we thought the? you were a slanty. Oh, I need to get this armor off now. No, your plan was good, but uh, our plan would have been bad. <laughs> it involved killing you, yeah. Yes. <clears throat> we would have Anyway, Abrita sent us over. <laughs> she wanted to check and make sure you were okay. Well, so you're here to help then? Yes, yes. Oh, good, because I don't know. I have no idea what I'm... Things got... Did you kill someone? I mean, no, but somebody died. Uh, it's, it's a long story. This morning, one of the Islanti soldiers came in and he wanted the, the colony's manifest, you know, the supply manifest that says how much food and supplies and everything that we have. And I figured that they were probably going to start rationing our food and, and who knows what else. So so I I refused and, well, he didn't like that very much. He he tried to kill me. He, he shot at me, but, but he missed, thank Abadar. And uh, the bullet somehow ricocheted around and, and hit that shelf in the office and it fell over and, and it just broke his neck instantly, so. <laughs> wow. That's, uh... <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, like I said, thank Abadar, I wouldn't be here. As you can see, I took his armor and, and weapons, and uh, the body's still in the back of the warehouse. The sooner we take care of that, and the sooner I get out of this armor, the happier I'll be. And as he finishes saying that, you hear the helmet he's wearing has a comm unit inside, and it crackles to life a little bit. And you hear a very small voice coming from inside, speaking a language that you don't understand. Darn! That's the second time they've radioed. They're gonna figure out what's going on soon. I don't suppose any of you speak Islanti. Uh, I do not. <laughs> nope. I don't think so. Well, uh, maybe we should not hang out here. Uh, maybe we let's go back to, uh... They're gonna come looking sooner or later, and if they find this body in my warehouse, it's not gonna be good news for me. All right, look, you clean up your shop. I can take this guy and just throw him in the trees or something. Yes, Uko, please. Sounds like a plan. Uh, whatever you think will work. Or, or we could take him back to Bre Bre Breta. Brenna? What was her name? <laughs> her name is Abreta. Abreta. No, I think disposing of the body in the woods is probably a good idea. We've made a couple of bodies out there already, so adding one more to the pile will at least remove suspicion from those in the town. I could just fly up a bit and drop them and there you go. Oh, hang on, what do you mean you made bodies in the woods? We've killed others. Uh, guards. Aslanti. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in your little resistance you guys got going. It'll be good fighting, but uh... Oh, I don't... I don't know too much about that. That's the Breda's whole situation. <laughs> well, you're in it now, kid. Oh boy. All right, let's uh, let's take care of this. Yes, let's clean this place up really quickly and then uh, we will take you back to Breta, yeah? And you can hopefully be safe there. Okay, yeah, sounds good to me. He goes into his office and starts picking stuff up. Uko, you head into the back of the warehouse and you very quickly find a dead human body slumped up against a wall of 
machinery that's been stored in the warehouse and you can pretty easily just pick it up and throw them over your shoulder. I'm going to say Mishka and Avesa, you guys help Rendell clean up his office. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Uko, you go up into the the forest to dispose of this body. (laughs) And just chuck him as far as you can. (laughs) Uko, make a perception check for me. Okay. That's a 15. As you're coming back, you see a patrol walking away from you on this path off to the east. So you must have just missed them. They must have walked behind you as you went into the forest. And as you are coming back from disposing of the body, you see them now walking off towards the east. There are three of them. Uh, I won't go fight them by myself. That's dumb. (laughs) So Uko will wait till they're a good out of sight, distance away, just I'm sneaking back. And so yeah, they disappear behind those foliage there and you come back around and by the time you get back, the office is more or less put back together and so you all regroup outside and, and Rendell says thanks guys, let's get back to Abretta's. Yes, yes. Hey, uh, real quick, I just saw three of them heading out there. What? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go. Hurry, 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 hurry. I'm just he's saying. very worried. Is he still wearing the uh, the armor? Or was that disposed with the body? No, he's still wearing it. Listen, we can maybe go handle those guys so they don't report anything if they happen to spot the bodies we left behind and also take care of some numbers. I really just need... I would really like to get out of here. Not um, you, not you. Yeah, no, we're going to put you back with the bread, but I'm talking about you guys. What do you think? That might not be a bad plan. Perhaps we can uh, ambush them when they're coming back. But first, let's take care of our friend here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, let's let's go. Yes, yes. And you guys very easily make your way back to a British shop and head in through the panel again. And as you enter... You find Abreta speaking with a slender female Lashunta, and she turns as you enter and she says, Rendell, oh good, I'm so glad you're safe. We were so worried about you since this morning. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was a whole, whole long deal. I'll, I'll tell you all about it. And as they're having this exchange, the Lashunta woman is just like staring at you, Uko, and she blinks in surprise and her little antennae twitch and she says, you were not lying. He is very large. And Abretta says, yeah, he's a big one. And apparently he and his friends killed a bunch of the soldiers out in the forest. I'd like y'all to meet my friend, Gariah Lee. She's one of the few brave folk left here in the settlement. And she's been helping me plan our next steps. Hello. Well, hello, Gariah. It is a pleasure to meet you all. You've come at quite an inopportune time, I'm afraid. Yes, but yes. We're so very grateful for your help. Of course. Happy to be of assistance. Speaking of assistance, I put together something that should help y'all out. I'm going to send it to your comms now. And she taps on her data pad and your comm units blip with a notification that you've received a file. Ah, are you able to get around the suppression? Oh, I didn't. You can still do local ad hoc file transfers and that sort of thing, but any over the air communications, it ain't going to work. Nah, good to know. Thank you. You open the file to see a bird's eye photo of Madelon's landing, and there's red handwriting scrawled in various places on the photo, and Abretta's name is written across the large building at the northern edge of the map, and she points to it and she says, So, we're here at my module. I've labeled all the spots that we're going to need to hit. Where should I start? Oh. I, uh, really love the map. (laughs) I... Oh, I love it. <laughs> tell, tell us about this one called Bad. Bad! <laughs> That's the garrison. This should be, obviously, the last step. Once we've significantly hampered the Islanti around camp, we'll mount our assault to wipe out the rest of them and, and rescue our friends. But until then, I highly suggest you guys stay the hell away from that building. Well, then uh, maybe let's try the cemetery, the, the one furthest away from that building. So cemetery, this one might be a little dangerous, especially considering the uh, state you all are in. But there's a perimeter patrol that always loops around past the cemetery, and it's a pretty good spot to get a drop on them. There's a lot of cover around there, and it's far enough away from the rest of the colony that you wouldn't draw too much attention if you're quick. Was that the direction you saw the guards going, Uka? Oh, it was those three I saw. Yeah, they were walking towards the cemetery. 
Oh, you already saw the patrol? Well, in that case, it's going to be another couple hours or so before they loop back around, but, but that gives you plenty of time to set up. Very true. If we stop that patrol, that at least get us a little safe area. Well... With dead people. For a little while, at least, until they sent out another patrol to go check on them. Yeah, we could kill those ones too, right? I suppose so. Just keep picking them off, I guess. What's this, uh, moisture collector, though? We don't have a well or anything like that, so the moisture collector, it pulls water out of the fog. It's really the only source of drinking water we have here, and those bastard Islanti, they took it over, and they've been rationing our water ever since. You know, using it as a means to keep people in line. If we could liberate it, it'd do wonders for morale. Thing is, people have been saying the thing's been acting strange lately. They seem downright afraid of it, if I'm being honest. Not sure what the Islanti did to it, but it's definitely nothing good. Hmm. Mm. Curious. Are they using something to protect it, maybe? I don't know. I, I haven't been over there for a while. I actually have a store of water, as you saw, that I, I'm using as an emergency, you know, helping people uh. who need it the most, such as three strangers who come out of the forest bleeding profusely. I see. Thank you for offering your water to us. And uh, yeah, we can definitely look at that and uh, see if we can't help. Uh, what is this thing here? Hob car trap? Oh, that's our hobgar trap. Yeah. I don't know if maybe you've seen them out in the forest. They're these little sort of monkey-like creatures. Oh, God. They, uh, they're a real nuisance. So we set up this trap. Basically, it's a cage on a big-ass pole up in the sky. An electrified cage. It attracts them, and they go up and, you know, try to check it out and get caught in the cage. And then, normally, we take the cage out into the forest and let them loose out there. But uh, ever since the Islanti took over, I don't think it's been emptied. And those little bastards in there, they got to be angry as hell by now. And think about the chaos we could unleash if we open that trap. Mm. It'd be a perfect little distraction. That it could. That's not a bad idea. Maybe we can hit that first. Let the monkeys cause a little bit of chaos while we take care of some of these other objectives. Would that be a good first move? Wouldn't that draw the most attention? Well, presumably away from us if we go somewhere else. It's a central location. I would be worried about how much attention we would be drawing and alerting the garrison. I I'm wondering if it would be wiser to hit outside locations first and then uh, when we want to make our strike against the garrison, that's when we would want to release the trap. Hmm. A Bretta shrug, she says. Those hobgars are loud as hell and the fog would keep you guys hidden from sight from the garrison, so I wouldn't think you would be risking too much by going over there if you wanted to. Well, shoot, I say we hit that trap, let those monkeys out, and then maybe just go clear up whatever's going on at the moisture collector. Let's figure it out from there. Hmm. She shrugs again. She says, like I said, it's up to y'all. Whatever order you guys want to do this in. Whatever you think is best. And Madelon? Madelon is where they were keeping uh, Sedona, correct? Sedona is in the garrison. Mm hmm. As far as I know, at least. Madelon, though. That's Madelon right. is also in the garrison. Oh, you're talking about this on the map? Yeah, the one that says Madelon. Yeah, that's his house. So yeah, like you know, Sedona seemed real keen on something about this old probe that she found out in the forest, and we're thinking that that damn thing is what sparked this whole damn debacle. So uh, yeah, I didn't really understand what she was saying when she described it to me, but I'm willing to bet that Madelon scrolled away some more information about it in his residence there. But the poor bastard, he's being held in the garrison too, so if you wanted to go over there, see if you can find anything, I have the code to let you in. And Garaya perks up as she's saying this. Garaya says, If you're going to Madelon's residence, please let me know. There's something there that I need. Would it help the resistance? Because if not, maybe the house should not be a priority at this time. Oh. And her shoulders sort of sink a little bit. She says, no, it's it's nothing that urgent, I guess. I apologize. We should focus on helping the camp first. And then after that... Well, now, hold on. Uh, what a... <clears throat> what exactly is it that you're looking for? Um, it's about my family. They're miners in the Blue Tin Mountain Range. And there was a mining accident a couple weeks ago. Madelon should have gotten a report about any injuries or or casualties, but he got taken away into the garrison before he could tell me what the report said. So 
I was hoping that if you go to his house, you could maybe look for the report and and tell me what it says about my family. Of course, we can definitely do that. Yeah, no, that won't be a problem at all. Say, so, uh, maybe even you could join us if we help you out or pay for services or anything or... Uh, I'm... I'm no fighter. I mean, I don't think going to investigate Madelon's place would be a terrible idea. If we could learn about what Madelon knows about what's going on here with the mysterious probe or whatever it was, we might know more about why our enemy is here and perhaps their motives and... I don't know, just throwing that idea out. Well, that's about everything. Uh, just whatever you do, be careful and, you know... Try not to get anybody hurt who doesn't deserve it, at least. Right. All right. I say we free those monkeys, check out that moisture collector, maybe then hit up Madelon's or surprise patrol by the cemetery. <laughs> it was just like, we only need a day, right? I mean, it is early still, but uh, if you ever need a rest, uh, some place to come hide out, you're more than welcome to come back here. There's room for y'all. Oh, appreciate that, Abretta. Indeed. Hmm. What do you guys think? Setting up an ambush and thinning out their numbers at the cemetery might be... Do that first. ...a good course of action. I, I don't know. I'm not... Uh, combat isn't my speciality, so I would leave that to the two of your discretion. I think that ambush is not a bad idea. We could wait, rest up, prepare an ambush. They show up. We take out a couple of them. Once we've done that, since that's far enough away that hopefully we don't raise a ruckus or anything, we can come back, let out those monkeys, and then maybe go help out with that moisture collector. I agree. I think if we can thin out their numbers, it should make some of these objectives a little easier. Uh, Bretta looks at her watch and she says, All right, so you guys got here maybe 15 minutes ago, you saw that? I'd say you have about an hour and a half before they come back around on their patrol. Perfect. Well, let's go, uh... Check out that cemetery. Is there anything there we actually need to worry about, aside from dead bodies? No, it's a pretty small little cemetery. It's, it's been filling up more lately, but no, nothing to worry about other than the patrol. Oh, yeah, you might run into some hobgars out there, maybe. As long as you guys don't have too many electronics on you, they should leave you alone. Wait, they, they like the electronics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They love electricity. Yeah, they're they're zappy little bastards. Hmm. Out of curiosity, do you have any anything we could set up for our ambush, like a trap, like even just something as simple as a net or something that we could attempt to disable one of them or at least hinder them no, while? Uh... I'm sorry, they the Islanti came through systematically and just confiscated every single thing that we could use to even think about messing with them. So. That's why we were happy to see you guys arrive, because you came here strapped to the teeth. We don't have any weapons or anything at all, so I'm sorry to say, but you're going to have to make do with what you have. Understood. Well, we don't need weapons to make a trap. Do you have perhaps any any rope or uh, maybe some extra panels that you're not using? Uh, I mean, there's some panels covering up the walls, keeping the drafts out. Um... You could check the workshop to see if you can find anything if you want to try to jimmy something together, but nothing comes to mind. Let's check the workshop. Maybe we can find something to help catch these patrols off guard. Help yourself. She just sort of gestures to the big repair workshop that you guys mm -hmm. came in through. Sounds good. All right. Should we head out now or do you want to perhaps rest a little bit here? Uh, I say we get out there and get ready. We can rest out there. Okay. Sounds good. Hey, uh, what was your name again, young lady? Me? Oh, uh, my name is Garaya Lee, and I'm sorry I didn't get your names. Oh, my name is Uko Tyrannus Bronte, and uh, don't you worry, we'll find out what happened to your family. Well, thank you so much. I, I really hope that you guys can find out what happened. We'll do what we can. Don't you worry, Garaya. <laughs> now, uh... You take care. We're going to go save your little town. <laughs> Good luck out there. I've already walked away and I'm in looking around the, <laughs> the, the workshop for anything. <laughs> I will as well. Uh, whoever's looking, make a perception check. That is a 21 for me. So 21 for Mishka and 11 for Navessa. 
Uh, Navessa, you actually don't really find anything useful. There's some wrenches and some tools hanging up. Like I said, some spools of wire on the ground. Mishka, you are a little bit more thorough. Is there anything in particular that you're looking for? I don't think he's he's necessarily looking for something specific. He's more so like looking to see what it would inspire, you know, so either like a panel or something that they can use to have Uko squish them with or something or rope to to make like a like a lasso or something. Ooh, or or if we can like get some wire and electrocute it, make him walk on it. And then yeah, pfft. something like that. While you're in the workshop, you do see some of the wall panels are loose just like the one that you guys came in through on the side. And yes, you do see those large spools of wire piled up on the ground. They are not active wire. They're just loose wire on the ground. So if you wanted to use them to electrocute, you would have to find like a power source or something like that. I think a potential problem with this plan is, no offense, Uko, but doesn't electricity draw the attention of the Hobgars? Wouldn't we potentially make more trouble for ourselves if we were to go down this route? Yeah. Not if the Hobgars attack the guards who are getting electrocuted. There's a lot of if coming off that plan. <laughs> hey, did you see how quickly I fried those other ones? We did, we did. Easy peasy. If Hobgars show up, we kill them too. Whatever. It's not like we're letting the ones out of the cage first. Mm. Walk back inside. Retta, do you have like a power source or something we could use? Like a generator? A battery, something to electrify some wires to kill some guards or whatever. Not really. Maybe Kresk would have something like that. And who's Kresk? He's in charge of the stable. He's the other mechanic in town. Uh, is he on a part of your little resistance here, or would that be more... Well, I mean, he's tangentially helpful here and there, but he's not one of the more active members, no. So we'd have to buy him. Uh, you could maybe convince him one way or another, but his shop's all the way on the other side of town. Whoa. If we want to do that plan, we'd have to do it pretty fast. It might just be best to just wait for him and attack. I think at least the simplest solution, we could take some of this wire and at least maybe create trip wires. I, I don't know. That's true, we could. The moment one trips and falls if they don't spot the wire. Yeah. Easier targets, that's for certain. Sometimes simple is the best way to go. Well, anyway, the more time we spend dilly-dallying here, the less time we have to lay any traps or ambush. So, uh, shall we get off? Yes. Never dilly-dallied a day in my life. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, you guys leave a Breda's workshop. If you want more Dice Versa, check us out at patreon.com slash Dice Versa. We release bonus content for every episode, like deleted scenes and episode commentary. You'll also join our growing community with access to the Dice Versa Discord server, where you'll get to chat with me and the other players. So come join us. That's patreon.com slash Dice Versa.